African architecture was all about functional art. I try to explain when I'm engaged by people with a Western orientation that there was no conception or there was no concept of fine art in African architecture or African art. All our objects were functional. So you see an ornamental stool in the British Museum maybe or in Germany. The stool was not created as an ornament. It was created to be sat on. Or why then when was it ornamented? Or maybe because of the status of the owner. Or maybe because they wanted a better grip on the stool. Like for whatever reason, maybe to identify who owned it. But everything had a function. The buildings were paint in the buildings that were painted. Painted why? Oh, these are the emblems and the symbols of our tribe. This is the emblem and the symbol of my clan. It wasn't just painted for decoration. Even the whole decorative process, in many cases, were, create, were, were done by certain sectors of the society. Maybe the women painted, maybe the men of a certain age painted. It was a coming of age, it, it was, was part of the rights of society, the bonding process, transferring skills from one generation to the other. We had functional art, which is why in AD Consulting, there's a huge window to the atrium. Instead of putting Bogla bars there, I've got functional art. I've got uh, a phrase of Lagos. I've got a three-dimensional metal screen of Lagos. Uh, Lagos ride, rising from the water, which like all the ornamentation in my project was created by me. You, it, It's acts as a bogler screen. There's nowhere where the human head can pass through or the human body. But at the same time, it's art. But not art just to look at, but art that functions. The forms of African architecture came not because they looked good. They came because they were functional. They, ca they came about or were derived from functionality. So in the north, we have flat roofs. Why? To collect rainwater, scarce rainwater, that hardly from, from the sparse rain. In the south, sloping roofs. Why? To throw off the rainwater. Because if you try and collect that kind of water on, those, on the roofs, the roofs would leak. They had to have the rain that would come down hard and fast in copious quantities, drain off very quickly and be recycled. So it was not about form. It was not, we like heap roofs, we're going to, not, we like heap roofs, we're going to have heap roofs. We want gables, we're going to have gables. It was functional. It was what it was. It was functional. Functional art. The doors were carved in some of the palaces. The posts, the columns were carved. The history of the people were actually encoded in the carvings. The doors of the palace of the Gugal Vikere, which are now at the British Museum, were carved showing the advent of the white man into society. So basically, these doors were not just doors. They were pages in the history books of the Ikiti people of Ikere. The Igbos had the Mbari house. Westerners have a, a great difficulty understanding what the Mbari house was about because the Mbari house was a record of the Zeitgeist. There were objects, sculptures, ornaments, plates. There were sculptures of um, the white man riding in on horses. Uh, I say the white man because that's the way the traditional person would say. Riding in on horses, Koleonis riding in on horses. And basically, almost like a journal capturing the incidents of the time, but done in three-dimensional art, sculptures. And these Imbari houses were created and left to go to rot. But at that time, perhaps there were museums of contemporary happenings. Passing observer will think that these were sculptures that were just to be looked at. No, they were records of the happenings of the time. African architecture, African art has no concept of fine art, like the Mona Lisa that you just look at. I was saying at the Technical University of Munich when I was given a lecture, when I was appointed a visiting professor in 2019, I showed them an Ife bronze. We call it bronze colloquially, but they are not bronzes, they're alloys. It was a bronze of a king. Lifelike, realistic, realistic art at that level is no longer about just expressionism. It is realism capturing the details, the size of his nose, the way it was, his ears, exactly, his eyes, the way they were. And I said to them, what do you think this is? I got different answers. Art, sculpture. 
I said, no, this is a passport photograph. This is capturing exactly what the Oni looked like for posterity. So when he's dead, you can keep remembering what he looks like. Functional art. It, it was not a bust or a sculpture, the way Michelangelo's David was, of saying a random young man meant to look like David. No, it was an actual person. Cut in bronze, immortalized, so that generations to come might remember him. Functional art. The pyramids of the pharaohs were tombs. They were not meant to be monuments toured by people. They were tombs aligned in a particular way, calculated to relate to the planets and to astronomy in certain ways that are so precise to, to, to the last degree. Functional art. It wasn't about monuments, not really. It was not about monuments that people could just take a look at. They were actually fulfilling a purpose. So masquerades were not masks, the way you have art. They were the ancestors. They really, to the people, these were the ancestors visiting. Why? To ground them again in the annual cycle. Perhaps it was a yam festival. Perhaps it was the beginning of harvest. These were the, the ancestors coming to visit the people, to bless again the people. So for the Westerner who took the mask, he took, took a mask to... The person whose mask was, masquerade was taking you stole his grandpa. So this, uh, we need to begin to see things again from a point of respect for someone else's culture. Respect. They were not just sculptures. It was somebody's household god, an object of worship, a vital connection to his sense of identity and being was snatched away when that was taken away.